Have you ever wondered about the last queen who reigned over the Kingdom of Cyprus, a woman who held the titles of Queen of Jerusalem and Queen of Armenia as well? Catherine Cornaro, born on the 25th of November, 1454, was this remarkable woman. As a member of the noble Cornaro family of Venice, she was destined for a life of significance. Her father, Marco Cornaro, was a Knight of the Holy Roman Empire, a title that carried considerable prestige. Catherine's older brother, Giorgio Cornaro, was also a Knight of the Holy Roman Empire and a noted Padre della Patria, or Father of the Country. The Cornaro family was one of prominence and power, having produced four doges, the highest political position in the Republic of Venice. Catherine's early life was steeped in the intricate tapestry of Venetian politics and commerce. The Cornaro family had long-standing connections with the island of Cyprus, particularly in the realms of trade and commerce. In the Limassol district, an area known as Episcopi, the Cornaro family administered several sugar mills, exporting Cypriot products back to their homeland of Venice. This early exposure to international trade and diplomacy would serve Catherine well in her future role as a queen. Catherine's beauty and noble lineage attracted the attention of many, including renowned artists such as Durer, Titian, Bellini, and Giorgione, who immortalized her in their paintings. But it was not just artists who were drawn to Catherine. Her life was about to take a dramatic turn, leading her from the comfort of her Venetian home to the throne of Cyprus. This initial stage of Catherine's life set the stage for her future role as a queen, a role intertwined with politics, power, and the interests of the Republic of Venice. From a young age, Catherine was groomed for greatness, her life a carefully orchestrated dance between power, politics, and the strategic interests of Venice. In the world of monarchies, marriages often served as political tools. Catherine's life was no different. The island of Cyprus was in a state of turmoil following the death of King John II in 1458. The right to the throne was hotly contested between his daughter Charlotte and her illegitimate half-brother James. James, eager to solidify his claim, sought to strengthen his position through a strategic marriage. Enter Catherine Cornero, a young Venetian noblewoman. The Cornero family had a long history with Cyprus, especially in the sphere of trade and commerce. They were influential, wealthy, and offered an attractive alliance to James. On the other hand, the Republic of Venice had its eyes on the lucrative commercial rights and privileges in Cyprus. A marriage between Catherine and James was a perfect opportunity to secure these interests. So, in 1468, Catherine, a mere child of 14, was offered to James as his wife. The contract was signed, marking a significant political move that bolstered James's claim to the throne. This marriage was not a mere union of two individuals, it was a strategic alliance, a chess move in the game of power politics. It was a marriage designed to secure the commercial rights of Venice and Cyprus, to strengthen James's position, and to ensure the Cornero family's influence in the region. However, Catherine was not a pawn to be used and discarded, she was a player in her own right. Despite being thrust into this political melee, she carried herself with grace and dignity. She took on her role as queen consort seriously, understanding the responsibilities that came with it. In July 1468, Catherine found herself married by proxy to a man she had never met. She was a queen now, a queen of a foreign land. Two years later, she set sail for Cyprus, ready to meet her husband and take on the challenges that lay ahead. So, at the tender age of 14, Catherine found herself married by proxy to a king, setting sail for a foreign land two years later. Catherine's reign was anything but smooth sailing. The sudden death of James II brought unexpected turmoil to the royal household. Catherine, then heavy with child, found herself thrust into the role of regent, a duty she undertook with a steeliness that belied her tender years. The shadow of power struggles loomed large over the kingdom of Cyprus. James III, Catherine's infant son and the rightful heir to the throne, became the target of ruthless plots. A faction, loyal to Charlotte, the legitimate daughter of John II, sought to depose the infant king and install Charlotte in his place. These adversaries didn't hesitate to keep Catherine a virtual prisoner, attempting to sever her influence and control. This was a time of deep uncertainty, of shifting alliances and concealed daggers. 
Yet, Catherine remained undaunted, her resolve unbroken. She stood as a bulwark against the tide of conspiracy and intrigue that threatened to engulf her kingdom. However, the Republic of Venice, the city of her birth, cast an ominous shadow over her reign. The Venetian fleet, having sailed away once, returned to restore order in the wake of the plot against James III. But their intentions were far from altruistic. The Republic was plotting its own takeover of Cyprus, exploiting Catherine's vulnerable position. Despite the odds stacked against her, Catherine proved to be a formidable regent. She navigated treacherous political waters with a deftness that belied her youth. She steered her kingdom away from the brink of chaos, maintaining a semblance of stability in a time of uncertainty. Yet, the challenges kept mounting. Venice's meddling, the plots against her son, the power struggles within her court. All these were battles she had to fight while carrying the burden of impending motherhood. Catherine's reign was not just a period of political turmoil. It was a personal journey of resilience and courage. Catherine's reign was marked by a constant struggle for power, a fight she had to undertake while also navigating the complexities of motherhood. Upon the death of young James III, Catherine Cornero became the reigning queen of Cyprus. From the year 1474 to 1489, Catherine found herself at the helm of a kingdom on the brink of collapse. Cyprus, once a flourishing island, had been a tributary state of the Mamluks since 1426. Its glory days were fading into the annals of history, replaced by an era of decline. Catherine's reign was marked by the burgeoning influence of Venetian merchants. They held sway over the island's economy, and by extension, its politics. Their control was not a fleeting presence, but a deeply entrenched force, shaping the island's destiny. The once vibrant kingdom was slowly but surely being drawn into the sphere of Venetian influence. The political climate of the time was laden with intrigue and looming threats. Far away in the Ottoman Empire, Sultan Bayezid II was eyeing Cyprus, a prospect that sent ripples of fear through the island's inhabitants and the Venetian Republic alike. The Republic, ever watchful of its interests, was quick to respond. In the year 1488, they discovered a plot to marry Catherine to Alfonso II of Naples. This was a move that could potentially wrest Cyprus from their grasp. The Venetian Republic, fearing loss of control and a potential Ottoman attack, decided to act. They convinced Catherine to cede her rights as queen, recalling her to Venice and formally annexing the island. Catherine was left with no choice but to bend to the will of the Republic. In February 1489, she abdicated her throne, marking the end of her reign and the beginning of Venice's rule over Cyprus. Under Catherine's reign, Cyprus was a kingdom in decline, largely under the control of Venice. A sad end to the reign of the last queen of Cyprus, but her story, her struggles and her strength are a testament to the resilience of women in the face of overwhelming odds. The end of Catherine's reign marked the end of an era in Cypriot history. As the last queen of Cyprus, Catherine Cornero's reign was characterized by the persistent influence of the Republic of Venice. By the late 1480s, the Venetian government, fearing a potential attack from Sultan Bayezid II, and the discovery of a plot to marry Catherine to Alfonso II of Naples, decided to intervene. The Venetians, who had always been formidable players in the politics of the Mediterranean, were not about to lose their grip on the island of Cyprus, a jewel in the crown of their trade and commercial ventures. In February 1489, they took a step that would forever alter the course of Cypriot history. They persuaded Catherine, who had been reigning as queen since 1474, to cede her rights to the Republic of Venice. This marked the official end of Catherine's reign and the beginning of Venetian rule in Cyprus. The island, which had been a kingdom for centuries, was now formally annexed as a colony of the Republic of Venice. This was a significant shift, marking the end of an era of Cypriot sovereignty. But what happened to Catherine after her reign? With her royal duties behind her, Catherine returned to Venice where she lived a quiet life in a palace awarded to her by the Venetian government. She remained a respected figure, her status as the former Queen of Cyprus and the daughter of St. Mark, ensuring her a place in the Venetian aristocracy. 
Catherine lived out the rest of her days in Venice, passing away on the 10th of July, 1510. Catherine Cornero, the last Queen of Cyprus, lived a life marked by political maneuvering and power struggles. Her story is a testament to the complexities and challenges of being a woman in power in a world of men. And so, the tale of the last Queen of Cyprus comes to an end. A captivating narrative of power, politics, and the relentless tide of history.